Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Chris with Too Spooky For You here. Uh, it's been quite a while since I made a video, but I decided that I'm going to start making more. And in order to do that, I'm still going to be doing the top fives, but I thought I'd branch out and try some different things. So I'm trying to start a new series that just goes over weird news of the week and I can give my thoughts on it, ask your thoughts on it, and just go from there and see how it works out. I mean... Who knows? It might work, it might not, but it's worth a shot, right? Oh, uh, one sec. <laughs> Draw a little alien here. There we go. Production value. Let's just get into it, huh? Conservationists trying to save Kenyan giraffes stranded on floating island. Conservationists are working to rescue giraffes stranded on an island in Lake Boringo? I think I said that right. In western Kenya, after heavy rains led to the flooding of their ranged land habitat, threatening the animals with drowning. Wait. If there's any animal that would survive a flood, you'd think that the giraffe would have the best chances. Relentless rains have increased lake levels, which began to swallow up the peninsula where the giraffes have been living. The Kenyan Wildlife Services in... C collaboration with the United States based Save Giraffes Now and Kenya's Northern Rangeland Trust rescued two of the giraffes with a custom made steel barge and is working to rescue the remaining six from the island. Quote unquote, there is a great urgency to execute this rescue, said David O'Connor, president of Save Giraffes Now, in a statement. With giraffes undergoing a silent extinction, everyone we can protect matters. Their giraffes are going extinct? I did not know that. Uh, it looks like they have a little video here of the barge that they had gone. Let's see. I just want to check out what this barge look lo what this barge looks like. <laughs> look at that! Why, why do they have their faces wrapped up? Well, I guess it's to to not they don't get scared. I mean, I mean, it, yeah, it's flooded, but it doesn't. You think they'd be able to walk? through that I guess I guess not I don't know who knows yeah look at that guy go he's just cruising along on to the next and the next story is the juiciest one because apparently there's a galactic federation and we're not in it former Israeli space security chief says extraterrestrials exist and Trump knows about it this is a uh, Peak 2020. A former Israeli space security chief has sent eyebrows shooting heavenward by saying that Earthlings have been in contact with extraterrestrials from a galactic federation. The unidentified flying objects have asked not to publish that they are here. Humanity is not ready yet. Gee, I wonder what would make them think that. Chaim Ashed, former head of Israel's Defense Ministry Space D Directorate, told Israel's Yedot Aronot, I guarantee I got that wrong, newspaper. The interview in Hebrew ran on Friday and gained, and gained traction after parts were published in English by the Jerusalem Post on Tuesday. A respected professor and retired general, Ashed, said that the aliens were equally curious about humanity and we're seeking, under, seeking to understand the fabric of the universe. I need to get some water. Ashed said cooperation agreements have been signed between species including an underground base in the depths of Mars, where there are, Amer where there are American astronauts and alien representatives. I'm, I don't know about this one, man. <laughs> The guy is, like, the former head of Israeli's defense ministry, the space directorate. Ah, honestly, with this this year, I I just wouldn't be surprised anymore. But if it says that we're not yet ready to know about their existence, if there's any time to announce that aliens exist, I think now's the time so everybody just chills the hell out and stops fighting with each other. But, you know, we're... That's probably never happened. Aliens could come down and take a shit on the White House lawn and people will still debate whether it happened on Twitter. 
and whether the the aliens should have shit on the lawn or should have shit on the lawn and <sighs> a spokesperson for NASA said one of the agency's key goals was to search for life in the universe but that ha- it had yet to find signs of extraterrestrial life I think that I, honestly I kind of consider that BS because I mean, you remember those videos that were leaked out by uh, Tom DeLong from Blink-182, of all people. And then, those were, what was it, this year, the FBI came out and confirmed that those videos were real? The uh, Tic Tac flying one? If I can find it, I'll put, a, I'll put an example up when I'm editing this video. I don't know. Maybe this is real and something's coming. But I think NASA's BSing on that. Although we, although we have yet to find signs of extraterrestrial life, NASA is exploring the solar system and beyond to help us answer fundamental questions, including whether we are alone in the universe, the spokesperson said in a statement. Now, where was the thing? Yeah, I should have added that Donald Trump was aware of the extraterrestrial's existence and had been on the verge of revealing information but was asked not to in order to prevent mass hysteria. I mean... I mean, I've seen stuff about the story before, and a lot of people were pointing to a interview that was done with Donald Trump and his son, uh, where his son asked him if he had any information on Roswell, and his answer was kind of, kind of interesting. I actually have that keyed up here. We'll uh, take a look at that real quick. Before you leave office, will you let us know if there's aliens? Because this is the only thing I really want to know. I, I want to know what's going on. Would you ever open up Roswell and let us know what's really going on there? So many people ask me that question. I know, yeah. it sounds almost ridiculous, no, but it's actually it the real question I want to know. It sounds like a cute question, but it's actually, there are millions and millions of people that want to go there, that want to see it. I won't talk to you about what I know about it, but it's very interesting. But Roswell's a very interesting place with a lot of people that would like to know what's going on. So you're saying you may declassify? No. You'll, you'll, you'll take it? Well, I'll, I, I'll have to think about that one, right? Uh, I'll have well, to think about it. All right. Yeah, I, ask, I mean, that could just be, you know, hunky-dory just play, being playful or whatever. But I don't know if there's anybody that worked, was going to do that. I think uh, it would be, it would have been him. Would Donald Trump really be able to keep that to himself? I mean, if he was threatened, he might, but I don't know if there was like no threat of like any repercussions from it and he knew about aliens or something. I think he'd be out out in the news the next day he found out about just telling everybody. But that's just my opinion. Anyway, we're going to move on to the next story, which kind of fits in with this one a little bit. Pentagon responds to release a photograph taken by Navy pilot showing unidentified object. A new media report shows what is described as an unidentified aerial object, or UAP, UFO. They're just changing the name to make it sound more fancy, I guess. Uh, Flying near a U.S. Navy jet. In an article published Wednesday on the Debrief website and a new article Thursday, writer Tim McMillan goes into detail about several top-level briefings on the UAP task force, the Advanced Aerospace Weapons Special uh, Application Program, dang, that is a hell of an acronym, (laughs) and the Advanced Aerospace Threat Identification Program that were giving to uh, high-ranking members of Congress and military staff. Uh, Well, I'm just going to go to the actual article. I don't know why I have this this article keyed up. I actually have the the debrief article that they talked about there. Yeah, leaked photo surfaces of reported unidentified aerial phenomenon. The debrief has learned of a leak of an unclassified photo said to have been widely distributed in the intelligence community, which which purportedly shows what the DOD has characterized as Unidentified Aerial Phenomena, UAP. On Wednesday, the debrief reported on two classified intelligence reports issued by Pentagon's Unidentified Aerial Phenomenon Task Force. The debrief, oh, there's the picture right there. I think they have a zoomed in version down here somewhere. Yeah, right there. Look at that thing. That is wild looking. It, it looks sci-fi, man. It has that that rigged head. It almost looks like an upside down arrowhead. It's just kind of floating there. I wish we had motion video of it because that'd be even better. But this picture is pretty cool. I think that's an actual legit UFO, man. 
Anyways. Oh, yeah, and flat earthers. Look at that. See that curve there? You see that curve? You see that curve? Earth's not flat. Stop it. Anyways, moving on. <laughs> The debrief learned of the existence of the photograph from a defense official who has been verified as being in a position to have access to the UAPTF intelligence reports. Additionally, the same two officials with the DOD, that's the Department of Defense, and one of the U.S. intelligence community with whom we previously spoke, confirmed that the leaked image is the same photo provided in a 2018 intelligence position report issued by the UAPTF. The photo itself is said to be considered unclassified for official use only. However, because the image and accompanying report were shared on a secure intelligence community network, the officials we spoke with would only acknowledge it under strict conditions of anonymity. Anonymity. I always struggle. He wanted to be anonymous. I can say anonymous, but not anonymity. I can understand wanting to be anonymous, but it also brings into question the validity of the photo and whether it actually came from there. But I guess we're just going to have to take the uh, author of this article, what was his name? Tim McMillan, at his word here. The debrief reached out to Pentagon spokeswoman Susan Goh for clarification about the photo, who on December 3rd, 2020, responded to our questions via email. To maintain operation security and to avoid disclosing information that may be useful to potential adversaries, DOD does not discuss publicly the details of reports, observations, or examinations of reported incursions into our training ranges or designated airspace, including those incursions initially designated as UAP. So, we, we, uh, we verify, we, we know UAPs are a thing, I mean... We said we said as much, but anything we find on them, we're just not going to tell you. We're just not going to talk about it all. We're, you know, something like something like yeah, yeah, that was a UFO or UAP. Yeah, but you know, it's, if you want to know anything else, just hit the road. Can't have that. I just realize you can't even see my 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 production design. This this thing's a nightmare. This whole video is going to be a nightmare. But hey. First episode in a weekly series, there's going to be some growing pains, so just bear with me here. <laughs> According to officials the debrief spoke with, the photo appears to be the same as one referenced in our previous reporting. Described as an unidentified silver cube-shaped object encountered by military pilots as it hovered motionlessly over the ocean. It appears evident that the image was captured by the backseat weapon system operator of what appears to be an F-A-18 fighter jet. The photo is consistent with the claims that the image was captured by a pilot using their personal cell phone. Officials we spoke with said the image was captured in 2018 off the east coast of the United States. Look at that thing, man. What is that? <laughs> How does that thing even fly? There's no wings or anything. It's just floating there. I'm telling you, man, there's something to all this UFO stuff. Maybe that previous story is real. Who knows? I mean, I'd, I'd love to know what you guys think about all this stuff in the comments, uh, especially on that last story. Do you think there's an intergalactic uh, federation that is out there that we're just not aware of yet or some people are aware of, but the population isn't? While the details are difficult to make out, the image appears to depict an inverted bell-shaped object. It looks more like an arrowhead, man which is not readily identifiable given the photo's context. The object appears to possess ridges or other protrusions along its lateral edges extending toward its base. Okay, are they trying to say that it looks like this thing? Because that, that is not that at all. There's nothing hanging off. Dude, it's shiny. It's metal. It's not, okay. Okay. The object bears at least some resemblance to a GPS drop, drop zondi? I don't even know how to say that. An atmospheric profiling device designed to be dropped from an aircraft. However, however, notably absent in the pilot's photo is the GPS receiver, which tails below the drop, drop, drop zonds, drop zondis. What is that? Square coon parachute. Yeah, this bears no resemblance at all. What are you talking about? The debrief reached out to Terry Hawk in situ sensing facility. 
Manager at the National Center for Atmospheric Research's Earth Observing Laboratory about whether the object in the photo resembled any recognizable atmospheric research equipment. This is a quote. In regards to the photo, while the image of the object is not clear, it certainly does not look like a drop zombie. This has, as I said, that's just how I'm going to say it. I have no idea how to say that thing. Hawk told the debrief, because there are no signs of a drop zonde below the object where the object could potentially be a parachute and it does not have the right shape. The debrief has not been able to speak with any of the pilots involved in order to confirm the accounts described in the intelligence reports. In 2018, the Navy changed its guidelines concerning the reporting of unknown objects by military personnel, and surfacing of this photograph seems to indicate that some aviators are coming forward with sighting reports. Okay, well, this is just the latest thing that come out of uh, footage of UFOs, pictures of UFOs that our government has that just leak. I don't know, man. What do you guys think? Do you think this is this is a UFO? Do you think this is alien? Or do you, could, could it be some sort of uh, military prototype that's classified? Who knows, man? I, that definitely does not look like that parachute, though. All right. And moving on into even weirder news. Ladies and gentlemen, China is making super soldiers. China has done human testing to create biologically enhanced super soldiers, says top U.S. official. 2020. Isn't it awesome? Isn't this just a great time to be alive? I mean, it is. Cyberpunk just came out. After I'm done filming this, I'm going to go and play that. By the way, from what I've played so far, oh, so good. I'm playing on PC. I'm not sure how the consoles are. All right, let's read this tidbit of good news, huh? U.S. intelligence shows that China has conducted human testing on members of the People's Liberation Army in hope of developing soldiers with biologically enhanced capabilities, the top U.S. intelligence official said Friday. John Ratcliffe, the director of national intelligence, included the explosive claim in a long Wall Street Journal op-ed in which he made the case that China poses the preeminent national security threat to the U.S. According to Ratcliffe, he said that there are no ethical boundaries to Beijing's pursuit of power. His office in the CIA did not immediately respond to requests to elaborate on the notion that China sought to create super soldiers of sort depicted in Hollywood films like Captain America, Bloodshot, and Universal Soldier. Ah, uh, Van Damme. That was a good movie. Any, any of you guys uh, watch Universal Soldier back in the day, in the 90s? Uh, I, it sounds like they're trying to make, I mean, with all this, all the UFO stuff, the Galactic Federation, China's making super soldiers, man. We're getting Master Chief. And they find a halo out there somewhere. Chinese Master Chief. Isn't it fantastic? Last year, two American scholars wrote a paper examining China's ambitions to apply biotechnology to the battlefield including what they said were signs that China was interested in using gene editing technology to enhance human and perhaps soldier performance. Specifically, the scholars reported Chinese research using the gene editing tool CRISPR, which I actually have that up here. CRISPR is, is I'm just going to read the, the first paragraph of this. CRISPR technology is a simple yet powerful tool for editing genomes. It allows researchers to easily alter DNA sequences and modify gene function. Its many potential applications include correcting genetic defects, treating and preventing the spread of diseases, and improving crops. However, its promise also raises ethical concerns. What? Well, yeah, you get the ethical concerns of super soldiers, and you don't even know what this will do. Is like you could edit someone's gene like ten years down the line, something goes horribly wrong, they get some sort of weird disease. While the potential leveraging of CRISPR to increase human capabilities on the future of the battlefield remains only a hypothetical possibility at the present, there are indications that Chinese military researchers are starting to explore its potential, wrote the scholars Elsa Kanya, an expert on Chinese defense technology at the Center for a New American Security, and Wilson Vorndick, a consultant on China Matters and former Navy officer. Chinese military scientists and strategists have consistently emphasized that biotechnology could become a new strategic commanding heights of the future revolution in military affairs. That, that was worded very weirdly. 
The scholars wrote, quoting a 2015 article in a military paper. One prominent Chinese general, they noted, said in 2017 that modern biotechnology and its integration with information, nanotechnology, come on, man, this is Metal Gear Solid, nanomachines, Metal Gear, sorry about that, and the cognitive, etc., domains will have revolutionary influences upon weapons and equipment, the combat spaces, the forms of warfare, and military theories. Man, this is a... This stuff used to be science fiction, man. Now it's it's all coming to fruition. We're going to have super soldiers that were gene edited. We're going to have transhumanism, which is going to, you know, basically have machines added to, you know, humans to make them more powerful. So you have the gene that make you more powerful. You have the machines that make you more powerful with prosthetics and stuff like that. And we have UFOs and the Galactic Federation. Vorndick said in the phone interview that he is less concerned about the battlefield advantage such research might provide than he is about the consequences of tampering with human genes. Yeah, of course. But the battlefield advantage thing might be something to also be concerned with. This is weird, man. This is weird. When we start playing around with genetic organisms, there could be unforeseen consequences, he said. Representatives of the Chinese government did not immediately respond to a request for comment. You think? The overall message of Cliff's opinion piece is that China is a dangerous adversary that threatens American economic and national security. So, uh, scary times, man. What do you guys think about this stuff, man? Nanobots? Super soldiers? Biotech, UFOs, Galactic Federations. Hey, how's it going, everybody? Chris from Too Spooky For You here. I had an original outro that was originally recorded with the rest of this video, but for some reason or another, my computer decided to not keep it. So, thus why I'm filming this one. (laughs) Anyways, guys, all I wanted to say is thanks for sticking around to watch the video. Uh... If you enjoyed it, uh, I would appreciate it immensely if you let me know in the comments or giving the video a like. It really does help the channel grow when uh, you see engagement like that. And I would just really like to know the feedback for this type of video if you guys enjoyed it or if you guys didn't. And like I said at the beginning of the video, I still plan on uh, making the top fives. So those aren't going anywhere. I'm just kind of branching out and experimenting a little bit and seeing what else I could do. I realized that this video might have been a little bit janky and not the most professional looking or professionally made. It's my first time doing a video like this, so uh, I'm sure as I keep doing them, I'll probably get better at it. Hopefully. Anyways, guys, uh, again, thanks for sticking around for the entire video. If you liked it, let me know. Uh, also, if you want to follow me on Twitter, it's at too spooky for you 5 I'll put a little thing right here. Anyways, guys, with that being said, I will see you all in the next video. Stay spooky. Drop, drop Zondi?